Greetings, Wargamers. We're your hosts, Trevor, Jay, Josh, and this is Shitting Attack. Attack. Attack is sponsored by Discount Games Incorporated. Discount Games Incorporated specializes in customer service, low prices, and prompt shipping. You can find our web store at www.discountgamesinc.com. Welcome to Chain Attack. I'm your host, Trevor, and I spend most of my evenings trying to stop my son from burning up all of our resources in Terraria. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm I'm Jay, and I feel like I feel like I need to. Uh, it's it's like Trevor's finally hit rock bottom, and it's time to stage the intervention with World of Tanks. <laughs> and that Terraria is going to be as methadone. <laughs> so how that works? I think so. That's how methadone works. I mean, yeah, yeah I don't know how methadone works either. Uh, ba- so. Yeah, ba- basically methadone is it's the uh, when you're when you're trying to uh, you know get off of illegal opiates, you take methadone instead. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. As your replacement I, drug. I like it. Is is so once you're done with that, do you have to like take a replacement drug for methadone? Um, I mean, I, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure how you get off of methadone. Are you saying <laughs> the, met- <laughs> <laughs> the metaphor breaks down right here? Well, it's well, not like Trevor's going to quit gaming, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to quit gaming anytime soon. I mean, the, the drug is there and I will partake of it. It's just the flavor that I really have to, you know, decide upon. But the truth is, is that my kids are finally to the age that I, I was, when they were born, I was waiting for. and so. The fact that we've finally gotten a game where everyone is interested at the same time is like just it's a godsend, and I can't. I don't the heavens know. Heavens opened. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's ever. Gonna, <laughs> I don't know that there's ever going to be anything that's going to follow it up. You know, the, we've I've played Apex Legends with my boys, but my wife current clearly doesn't care for that. I've played various other games with with you know each kid, but there's nothing that it combines all of us together in one room and gets us playing the same thing. Although the youngest is not as enamored with Terraria as the rest of us are. The closest my clan has come to that, I'm Josh by the way, is um Don't Starve. Yeah, we tried that. I wanted to strangle the kids after thirty minutes. Uh, <laughs> well so it's interesting because so you're saying like Terraria you don't it sounds like you have a little bit of that but not as much, huh? Um no, I mean you've got no hunger or anything. If if you log in and walk away for an hour to go eat dinner, you're not going to come back. You might come back and be dead, but you won't come back and be your game won't be ruined. I mean, don't starve just feels like there's a very like definite, it's too punishing. Um, uh, not for me, but it definitely is for it's it's too punishing of mistakes. Oh sure, yeah, okay, yeah. In in Terraria, you could you know summon a boss, get killed by the boss. Everyone just respawns. It's not as big a deal. It doesn't ruin the doesn't cause you to have to restart and there were times during uh, don't starve where my wife and i it was just like real life my wife and i were spending all of our time trying to keep the family fed and and the kids were not contributing they were not contributing in a meaningful manner to keeping everyone alive and that that would eventually grind down to us all dying brutal we will probably retry it at some point when the kids are a little older the two younger boys yeah all right. Well, um, I guess news from Discount Games Inc. Um, I, I, one thing that it, it came to my attention that many people were not aware of: uh, we do sell Magic singles and Pokemon singles. It's it's not through the Discount Games Inc. website. If you just do a Google for Discount Games Inc. and TCG, it will bring up um, our our page, and you can order uh, collectible cards from discount games inc and and joy will be had by all (laughs) that's my favorite kind of thing joy i mean yeah yeah um anything from you guys before we dive into the eternals 
I have to tell a mildly to me funny story. Uh, Jay, I recently ordered from discount, the discount games, Inc empire uh, Calico because my okay. wife yep. specifically requested it because on a trip to Phoenix recently with my, we visited with my oldest daughter and her husband and they brought it out and my wife is enamored of it. And I'm like, Yep, we'll get that ordered. Sounds good. I mean, I fully expect it. It's basically an abstract game. It feels kind of domino-y. Like, you are drafting these little hexagonal quilt patterns and putting them on a board that eventually makes a quilt of 25 tiles, right? So it's like 5 by 5 I think. And uh, similar to, like, Azul? Yeah, I, I would say it's definitely in that same vein. And it's like, as you as you achieve certain groupings of patterns you attract kitty cats to your quilt (laughs) okay and so it has all these different little cute cat tokens and and as you achieve certain groupings of colors you get buttons to sew onto your quilt and it's all just points in the end right but it's like anyway she thought she thought it was a ton of fun and i'm like my biggest issue with this game like i'm i'm all on board obviously you're happy to Um, sell it right (laughs) <laughs> well, no, and also, like, I've I've owned a Calico before, and she was a lovely, wonderful cat that I loved. Okay. It drives me crazy that they don't have a Calico oh, on the as cover one of, of the this cats. game. No, oh, oh, the, cover oh, art the cover of this, of this board game has a cat <laughs> that is not a Calico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I, I especially like Euro games that do a good job of conveying a or if giving the feeling of a of a theme even if it's fairly light i would i prefer a game that and do you feel like the uh azul has a a good enough theming for you that's exactly yeah, the question y- i was yes. going to ask okay. yes so i haven't played I'll, I'll be honest i have not played the base game of azul the one i played was the one with like the the they were like triangles or um yeah they were yeah. Diamonds. Okay. And you, were, you were about. you were you were building like a um, like the stained glass of Sinatra or something. Yes. Yeah. Or or the tiled floor. Yeah, that was enough for me. I mean, I it's it is the theme is not deep, but it, to me it doesn't have to be. I I really liked the the theme feeling of the theme. You know that you're creating an artwork. I mean, another example is um, canvas. If you say canvas, I don't I don't know if I can take you seriously anymore. Why? Because Canvas is way more attached to its theme than Azul or Calico. That's it, fair, but but the theme is still well done, and and so tr- the truth is is that you can you could take away the theme and the game would still function. Yeah, well, and that's true in Calico too. Like it could be you know it could be human organs and um, rocks, you know, <laughs> and and the game would be no different. Yeah, I, I just I really do enjoy Euro games that that don't feel like the theme is completely unrelated. Well, all anyway, right, that was my interesting board game story. Awesome. All right, <laughs> all right. Well, let's dive into Eternals, and this is this is one where I I feel like fairly early on we will have some spoilers. So if you have not uh, watched it yet on Disney Plus, I would recommend doing so because. Yeah, I'm, I'm prepared to open with a spoiler. Okay, okay let's, I'm kidding. let's I don't... bust it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my favorite my favorite scene was when a character, uh, this is, I believe, how my children would say it, yeeted himself into the sun. <laughs> okay. Best part of the movie, hands down. Why, why was that the best part of the movie? Because I had grown a, a deep and abiding hatred of him. And, and it, you know, a lot of times the things, the characters that you hate don't, get what i would consider their just desserts but in the end i was actually quite surprised that he did that okay um i guess where where do we want you do you want to give like an overall impression of it or or what you what you think sure. to start off? Uh, that's probably a good start yeah, I, yeah. i'll, I'll go yeah. ahead and just say that from a mcu perspective i was pretty i'm kind of disappointed in the movie it seems like it's one of the worst mcu films that said that bar is fairly high and this would if this had been anything but an mcu film if this had been just a normal release i mean um, if this had been a a dc movie people the dc fanboys would be like oh my god they have 
you know, William Shakespeare has descended from the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is better than Aquaman. I think that's probably, yeah, <laughs> that's probably fair to say. Yeah, but I was, I, you know what, it felt, I, I'm, I hate to say this, but the, the plot, the, the moosh, motion of the, of the whole movie, the pace of it, just felt really ho hum, kind of, kind of oh. average. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So here's, I, I guess, here are two of my thoughts related to this. The first one is part of the, part of my issue is, you know, kind of my own issue of my expectations of the movie. And okay. the director that they, that is doing this, that did this movie. Chloe Zhao, right? Yeah. So she won um, an Oscar for best director for Nomadland. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, it's Josh. I'm sure you haven't watched it because it's radar, and I'm assuming Trevor, you haven't watched it because it's not your type of movie. Um, it. I actually don't know much about it, so I I wouldn't say it's not my type of movie because I okay. don't know anything about it. No, but I haven't seen it. No. So it's it's a Hulu original, I think, or it's on Hulu, something like that. Anyways, that, that's um, probably why I haven't seen it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it is basically it is about this. Um, the, the main character is someone who her husband dies. She is, you know, essentially retirement age, uh, Frances McDermott, who's, you know, an amazing actress. And she, she is not financially ready to, she's, she's, you know, essentially broke. And so she starts living out of her kind of camper van and, she does temp work at Amazon, temp work at these different places, but also is like kind of traveling around the uh, world or the nation. Um, and so it's it's basically kind of a, a movie about that type of lifestyle. And a lot of the a lot of the people who are in the movie are people who are actually doing that type of life in real life. And okay. so uh, they're they're not actors; they're people that are actually doing that that type of life so it's it is a very well done movie it's also you know kind of a a very weighty emotionally movie so Mm -hmm. uh, so i i wouldn't go ahead it sounds like the type of movie that would get me to triple my life insurance policy after i finished it (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah it kind of is and 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 if anything like you watch it like oh my god this is you know, this looks so awful, but it's, you know, not nearly as bad as like in, in a lot of ways, she almost they almost let Amazon off easy. Um, so, yeah, it. Yes. So I anyways, lot, I spent a lot of time worrying about my wife if I were to be, you know, sure. if yeah, I were yeah. gone. Because yeah, right. I, she's spent a good portion of our you know, adulthood as a stay at home mom. I just don't know. Pay the bills without me. Right. So. Um, so I, I had high expectations because she's because of the director, because of the director. OK. And, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect, although I had high expectations or hopes. And I, I it didn't really I, I it didn't accomplish what I had hoped for, I guess, um, which, again, is, is kind of my own issue. But really, the, the Trevor, you mentioned pacing, uh, some things like that. I think really my my biggest biggest issue with this movie is that it feels to me like it should have been a 12 episode Disney Plus series and that they tried to cram too much into too little. Yeah, I mean it feels like the character progression that they are attempting to accomplish in a feature film does not lend well to Especially with the number of Especially characters. with the number of characters, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, the number of characters is a huge issue. And also, you know, they, they do several different time skips and stuff like that, and that's fine. Um, but it also feels like it would have worked better if it's like, okay, well, in this week, we're going to time skip to Babylon and do right, yeah. an episode that is focusing on Ajax. One of the things I thought they did well is, and I only caught this on my second watch, was uh, <laughs> just kind of really paint, well then <laughs> yeah they just kind of paint the whole you know what are celestials and why do they matter or not matter you know the whole, i thought that was interesting but again it was crammed into a pretty fast scene right like where she talks to i can't remember the dude's name now ashalom or whatever yeah and he you know shows celestials making galaxies after they you know eat 
eat the eggs that are planets from the inside. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I mean, all that was I thought interesting to do. There is. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, I guess here's as, as good as uh, places anywhere. But I mean, do you do you think that you know, basically Icarus's argument is that you know what it it sucks that Earth is going to be destroyed, but because of this, you know, there's going to be galaxies and galaxies birthed. And right. Uh, I mean, do you do you think that he was wrong in that view? Well, I mean, I think that he's wrong, but only because he's basically the character Cyclops, and that's the other reason I was glad <laughs> he went into the sun. <laughs> like, he's a dick, and he shoots eyes, beams out of his eyes. Tell me that he's not Cyclops. They wanted no, to make him Superman, right. but, you know, sometimes I want Superman to go into the sun, too, so. Uh, I, you know, clearly it's a flawed argument, because really those worlds are just to feed more Celestials, or uh, what are they called? Yeah, no, that's right. That is what they're for. That it's oh, just, yeah, it's, it's just farming it, for celestials, farming yeah, galaxies. Yeah, for yeah, it's it's a hollow argument, so I don't necessarily agree with it. But to me, here's I don't know if I'm the only one that caught this. I I mean, amongst the three of us, but I, I'm sure I'm not the only one that caught this. To me, this movie, in many ways, feels like let us take all of the subgenres, the the not subgenres, the um the minorities. That, that we want to feature in this film and make them fight the white guy, which I think is fine, except for the fact that then they just plaster on this really hollow plot that doesn't actually do the whole theme justice. Oh, you're saying Icarus is the white guy. I, he is the white guy. That, yeah, that took me just a minute to pick up on. That makes He's sense. Icarus, Icarus sure. is the bad white guy, and then you've yeah. got you know, every other minority that's, that's the other people, which is, like I said, I don't have an issue with that, that plot point. I have an issue with them basically almost holding that up as this is see why our movie is great. And then not delivering on anything else. Oh, well, I have a question about Icarus, the Icarus plot overall. Like, am I just dim that I didn't see the, the sudden but inevitable betrayal coming? Like I was genuinely surprised when he threw Ajax to the wolves literally right uh and i was delighted by it like i i was glad for the twist because i felt like it added some sort of almost human level conflict you know that i could care about more than this sort of huge astral you know mm -hmm. universe spanning conflict i mean e even though they did a good job with celestials it's sort of hard to like care about them or take seriously any resistance to them you know what i mean so I saw it coming. I knew that he was that he had betrayed. I did not, however, know to the level. So when that scene happened, I actually thought it was more of a something normal had happened and he had refused to intervene instead of actively participating in her. Oh, and her, like going yeah. and placing her corpse there and the whole nine yards, right? Um, not not that part. The part where he basically throws her to her death, I just didn't expect it to be. I more thought that maybe she'd been attacked and instead of participating oh, yeah. okay. to save sure. her, he had just stayed and not, and not done anything instead of being an act and, you know, instead of being a flat out murderer by commission, more a uh, murderer by omission. Okay. And that's, and, and that sort of, that's the only thing that caught me off guard by it a little bit was I, I, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know to what degree. So what about you, Jay? Um, I, I, I think I was, uh, a, a little bit surprised by it. Yeah. I am. I am curious. You know, I listened to another podcast that was uh, like actual podcast professionals talking about the movie. Oh, <laughs> and, Stepping it up. One of one of their thoughts or one of their takes on it or opinions on it was that they thought that. I mean, I'm assuming you're going to disagree with this, Josh. Um, but I'm I'm curious on your two opinions. Um, their thought was that they felt like the movie went through a few too many convolutions to try to keep this uh, big reveal or big twist alive, and that they thought it would have likely been better if, at the start of the movie, you knew about you know the betrayal that Icarus has done, um, and but you and you also know that the other people don't know, and so. Instead of you being surprised by it, you're instead kind of like a voyeur watching 
like a fly on the wall. Sort everyone of else, everyone else, be surprised by it. Well, I'm here to tell you the funny thing is that my second watch of the movie was that because I fell asleep and the part that I woke, <laughs> I woke up for the betrayal and then watched to the end of the movie <laughs> and then went back and watched like everything <laughs> I had missed, which was like oh, the amazing. things in yeah the things in the Aztec history. You know, and like um, when they go to talk to Drew, all that stuff I had missed on my first watch through. So uh, maybe they're right. Maybe I enjoyed it a little better because I accidentally watched it in that order. Uh, I agree with that opinion. I agree that that, you know, treating the audience like we're going to make you guys into these sleuths and we're going to try to sneak this big reveal over you is not. And I don't blame the director. I blame the writers there. But I, sure, I, think, yeah. I think that you would have been better off to um, develop the why over time, knowing the end result. You know, I, I, I see that happen. I mean, Dresden Files does it. Uh, Monk, the series, does it. You see a lot of these things early on sometimes, and then you find out why over a period of time. You know, Monk does it really well. You always see the murder of the episode, and then you figure it out, you know, how it happened over the course of the episode and, and yeah, I think that it makes for a better story here. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of I'm one of my assumptions I guess as to why they didn't do like a a big Disney Plus series instead of the movie or whatever is I'm assuming that there were just enough expensive actors in this that <laughs> they couldn't have justified <laughs> the expense to make that with uh, Yeah, yeah but yeah, they could have done it without true. the expensive actors, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I would I would agree that's probably. Better. I mean, who's the only one that like really represented their role? Like, I can't remember the actor's name, but Kingo he was pretty funny. Like, you know, he he was good. Uh, Kumail I mean, is his okay. First thank real you. Life name. Yeah, and like Angelina Jolie, she didn't need to be. They didn't need to have her, honestly. Nope. Um. In fact, I think she was a little detracting. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who were the other? Was was like Cersei? Is she a big? Selma actress? Hayek. Richard Madden and Oh yeah, they didn't need and... some Hayek. I mean, freaking what did Ajax do in this movie? Died. The end. <laughs> <laughs> the end. So just get a pretty corpse, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I. Yeah, I mean, you ruined me, honestly, Jay, because when you made that comment, I'm like, and then I get to watch the movie, I'm like, yeah, Jay was right. <laughs> what what comment did I make? Well, you made a comment a that it should have been a series, and I'm like, yeah, oh, this yeah. would have made a lot of sense as a series. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I think it would have been a lot better as one. Yeah, it's, My, it's not only that, but like, I mean, actually, this is one that doesn't bother me as much because I realize they're they're setting him up for more. But like, Kit Harrington just plays a kind of a bit part in the a movie. A bit part, yeah. Yeah. Is and, he Cersei's boyfriend? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I was more interested about him at the end of the movie than about almost anything else. Mm, that's because like, honestly, yeah. his reveal is probably the most interesting thing to come out of the movie. Do we already know who he is or whatever? Like. I mean, yes. Is there an upcoming movie or something? Is there a comic book I should be reading that will tell me about the dude who has the death sword? Yes, there are comics. I don't know how good they are. I've never read them. All right. And I think Greg said that his uncle is supposed to be the Black Knight. Is that correct? Kit will Kit's character will be the Black Knight. Yes. Yeah. It's, okay. it's a it's okay. a it's a okay. it's a passed down sort of here's yeah. the sword right. here's our family curse slash curse yeah. sword yeah right. yeah. A, a quick aside, um, and like I don't know, you know, for sh sure that this is the case, uh, but you know, a while ago I read like this this article about steroid use in Hollywood and about how basically, you know, there's tons and tons of actors. It it talked about an actor who was like this nobody, and he was just like killing himself working out, and then he's like, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna take steroids, and then. He does like a fraction of the work, gets way buffer, and gets a lot, lot more successful in business and life, et cetera, right? And um, I obviously, I, I don't know. And, and he, the, the article says that like it's basically just super rampant in, in Hollywood currently in the age of. Um, well, why wouldn't it be? There's no test. Superhero. There's nothing, there's right. Nothing yeah. To stop them. Correct. Yes. Um, and so. You know, some of the transformations that you see with people, it it makes me, I guess, a little bit sad. That <laughs> not that not that I don't think people should, you know, 
do body transformations or whatever, but I, I think you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, you, you I read a, a little blurb the other day about how um, Chris Evans, I'm not that I'm saying Chris Evans is on drugs or on uh, steroids or anything, but during the first um, Captain America film, they had issues with the CGI because his arms were so big. Like when they during the initial part where they were trying to make him, you know, the little right, guy. Oh, yeah. right, right. Yeah, they they were having very they were having difficult times because his arms were so huge. Like he was causing basically clipping in their art and other things because his arms. That was is so funny. <laughs> so you know, and there's just you see a lot of that that super unrealistic body shapes coming out of and things that they do to basically you know dehydrate themselves so they'll be super cut for scenes to the point where they're almost you know, collapsing from fatigue um, yeah. so that they can look good on camera. Right. I mean, that, that's silly. So I'm, I'm curious, do you guys think that, you know, that Icarus is dead or is this kind of the equivalent of uh, the off-screen shooting of, uh, of King Kingpin? Jeez, I hate that you asked me that question. I so that. does it even matter since we know there's, is there, let me ask this as a counter question. Are there multiple Icaruses? Are they, are they just cloning these guys and sending them out to different worlds to do this? Oh, um, well, they're not cloning them. They're like, how did Kingo describe it? Growing Super them or whatever. robots or whatever. Yeah, well, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the term is, are there multiples? Because I think there are. So it doesn't. The, the point is moot. You're going to get another Icarus regardless. Well, oh, I maybe see. you could get another Icarus regardless. And that's really my main point is that the MCU needs more Richard Madden in it. So. You know, I, I don't care, I guess, what version of it it is. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is, was he, is he the cutest of the Eternals, Jay? Is that what you're telling us? Uh, he's easily, like, top three of everyone in the MCU. Because I'm here to tell you what, I, one of the other things I hated about him, I found his, his voice to be too soft in a lot of his oh, dialogue. Yeah. I, was like, what did, I was like, what did he say? Uh, who cares? <laughs> Who cares, these Cyclops? You're, you're watching it at home. Why aren't you having subtitles on? Oh, that's a fair question. Well, I mean, I probably had subtitles on because you kind of have to have subtitles for the one, the deaf Eternal, who I think she's awesome for the record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't think of her name. Uh, you know, but I probably... <laughs> I, I, awesome. I, subtitles wouldn't have helped me very much because I was playing Dice Legacy. <laughs> I, I My attention was split. I guess I don't like Richard Madden all that. I, I just haven't really, really latched onto him in anything I've watched him in. So anyway, Jay, I'm going to give you my definitive answer because it's the answer that I want. <laughs> yes, he's dead. Yes, <laughs> <Okay>. he will <laughs> never yeah. return. Okay, fair enough. Um, oh, sweet summer child. Any <laughs> anything else before we get to grading? Uh. <laughs> I guess I'll, I, I do have one. I'll, I'll ask one question before we, we dive in. Um, one of my big issues with it was that you know, we touched on this before. There's just so much cast crammed into so little time. Mm -hmm. uh, who are the Eternals that, or Eternal, I guess, that you most would have liked to have seen more of that you didn't get enough of? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. And I think that my answer is, and we did get quite a bit of him, but like he was just so funny and enjoyable that like and Kingo. ridiculous that I just want to see <laughs> like more and more and more of Kingo. Actually, what I was gonna say is what I want is more of his valet because that guy was amazing. Yeah, yeah, he was great too. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it feels right. like Fastos didn't have enough. I, I was that was the other one I was thinking of. Yeah, like. I mean, I do like that he got to put the screws to Icarus, so that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to agree on both points. I, I think Kingo is probably the most interesting to me. Um, and I would, if, if, if they, you know, shattered the group and send them all off to get their solo movies and there was, you know, I don't know how many, there are 10 different movies or whatever here, Kingo would be the movie I'd probably be most interested in. But Fastos is probably the a close second. Um, I'm trying to remember at the end, is Fausto still on Earth? Or I couldn't tell, like, when the big celestial comes and sucks Cersei up, who else did he grab, you know, to say, like, you sacrifice the celestial, so I, I'm going to go I judge thought it was now. I thought it was everyone that was left on Earth. But. Okay, so, like, she got Faustos and she got uh, Athena or whatever. And 
Okay. Okay. I just was a little unclear on that. And I freely admit that I could rewatch the movie, but that's asking a lot of me. Just put it on again during... <laughs> during my Another next playthrough of Dice Legacy. Yes. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll consider the, it. The other character that I, I felt like didn't get enough time was Gilgamesh. Um, yeah, that's fair. I, I, so I, I guess I, I also want your guys' opinion that, um, so I would say that, um, you know, they, they had Cersei as the main character of the show. Yeah. And she wasn't super interesting to me. Was, was that like, maybe, maybe this is just the, uh, you know, the gay guy that <laughs> was immune to her wiles or something, but like her, her power is kind of lame. Yeah. Uh, and you know what i don't know well i will say that for me one of the most disappointing scenes was when sprite totally ganked cersei in the back and then it, yeah I there was like no effect of, like cersei's just like i'm gonna turn this into water now and she just needed a pep talk from i don't remember who gave her the pep talk but i was like <laughs> that is total horse pucky because sprite <laughs> played her so good used her power so good and got such a like and it was like the DM gave Sprite no sneak attack damage. It was a bunch <laughs> of <laughs> I didn't care for that particular um it felt somewhat out of character, that, that that particular backstab. So I didn't I just didn't like it. Um I, I actually did enjoy Cersei as a character as the lead, um, for multiple reasons. And they weren't because of, you know, <laughs> the way she looked. It's just of I, her wiles. Yeah, I, I found her compelling for other reasons i guess uh she was but, nice but again <laughs> i feel like i'm, I'm gonna go up, i'm gonna i'm gonna take the the rung up even the level this feels like it's three seasons of of a series not just oh, yeah. not just yeah. one yeah, that's fair. like this yeah, is the like first season seasons. you could have done like them living their lives mostly mm-hmm. as humans and like especially you know. since you know i'm i am super excited for moon knight to come out but it's another six episode series and especially if they're going to be doing like these six episode series, then sure, let's go ahead and do three seasons of of Eternals and <laughs> of a six ep- as a six episode series. Yeah, three seasons. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, let us move on to grading then. All right. Let us talk of design. Um, it was at least colorful, which is why it would seem like an amazing DC movie, right? Yes, that's true. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, man, it's such a mixed bag because I, I feel like some of the characters were cool. Some of their powers were explored in interesting ways, right? Um, so I feel like if this were not an MCU film, if this just came out as a film about some, you know, weird space aliens. Yeah, weird space aliens sent to protect Earth. That it was, it, it wouldn't have been, it would have been a movie that everybody enjoyed and everybody went and watched, and we would have probably forgot about it in a few years. But it would have been one of the big blockbusters for the year. I mean, you can go back and look through uh, many years where there's big blockbusters that that come out and do well, but you don't really remember ten years later. That that's where this movie sits, and and the only reason we're gonna remember it is because it is part of the MC. Right, right. It's a it's an above average film that is a below average MCU. It is, I mean, I, it, is, it is the quintessential five or six. I was I was going to say a six. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the five. There were some other places where I'll give it a little higher than that, but okay. So Jay says a six. Yeah. All I, right. I like I the the plot is somewhat predictable. The characters are where it could have put itself ahead, but didn't. Um. Yeah. Next category. All right. Time management. I'm giving it. I've got a fast grade on this one, folks. I'm giving it a three because that's how many seasons of a television series it should have been instead of uh, the what they crammed into a two-and-a-half-hour movie. I think you're too generous. <laughs> okay. I mean, do you – so I, you're, you're, let's say you are given the mandate of trying to fit all of this into a movie. I mean, how well do you think they did with that, with, with the time they had, et cetera? Um. I think it should have gotten through and at least one more rewrite. I, I don't think they did a very good job of it. I, I feel like if if you're going to have to cram it into two and a half hours or two hours, that you're almost going to have to leave some of these parts as bit parts instead of tingle, you know, just sort of dangling the possibility of more inf- information or more interesting things about them. It's almost like they're, hey, we really want you to know about all of these characters, but in the end, we're not going to give you 
a full amount of any of them. Give me a full amount of the two or three that should be the central characters and let everybody fall into the back. Yeah. So what number are you giving? Are you giving it lower than a three, Trevor? I was actually thinking a two, but I actually like your reasoning. The three seasons it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Jay? Um, clearly the Eternals fanboy of the three of us so far. What do you got for us? I mean, the ironic thing is that I think that Trevor actually liked the movie more than I did. I, I really <laughs> did enjoy the movie quite a bit. I just, yeah. I, it's hard for me not to, to ignore some of the flaws because I can see the gem inside. Right, right. Oh, I mean, I'm contract, contractually obligated to creep the numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go with a four. Uh, funny. Uh, repeatability. Um, pretty low for me, even though, yes, I did watch it twice in parts. Uh, but I, I'm going to say just probably slightly below average for me, so probably a four. This is one of those movies that I will only rewatch when we go through and rewatch the complete MCU. I just don't see me throwing it up like I did. You're um, not going to be like, man, I'm I'm ready to watch. I mean, what what are what are your most rewatchable MCU movies that you watch on their own? I guess Th- Thor Ragnarok. I've probably seen Spider Man okay. into the Spider Verse. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok. I've probably seen thirty times. Man, Jeez. soon Spider Man No Way Home is is going to be available as well and and don't get me wrong i've seen a lot of them many many times so that's yeah. just one of, that one's just probably it was i just i really resonated the humor with me and so i just i watched a lot of thor ragnarok i just thought it was fantastic um so. i've i've watched it three times so far twice in the theater once out and i'm going to grade it not compared to other mcu movies but how how often i'll rewatch it compared to movies in general Okay. And it'll probably get like a seven for me on that. Man, you are the numbers creeping champ. Jeez. But that's that's also like most MCU movies on rewatchability are going to be like an eight or nine for me. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I, get, so, I get what you're saying. Okay. Uh, yeah, on I, to fun. Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Trevor. I was just going to say my, my, my grade is probably more like a four. Yeah. I would say this is below average for just an average movie. For rewatch or repeatability. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we're on to fun, probably a higher category for me. I actually did enjoy the movie again, for reasons I've already stated may Icarus die eternally. Uh, (laughs) so a six there, there there's some scenes in here that really are a lot of fun, especially, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like some of the fights and stuff. No, no, no. Kingo and his valet, like there's some scenes there that, that I could, I could watch a whole movie of that. So there's fun here. It's not the the movie doesn't fail on fun in my opinion. Yeah, let me let me add one other fun scene that we didn't talk about. Um, When Makari basically is speeding Icarus and just repeatedly bashing his head against a stone wall, (laughs) it's almost satisfying. (laughs) I might move the repeatability score up just for that scene. Um, I I actually think that and in in this one I'm I'm probably comparing it too much to other mcu movies but i think it does pretty poorly on the fun scale compared to other mcu movies yeah as a whole it definitely does well because kingo is really the only kind of like i don't know comic relief i guess yeah icarus like cyclops takes himself way too seriously (laughs) (laughs) i'm hating him more and more and i hated him for that lot but you you you, every time you equate him to cyclops i my heart anger yeah shrinks a a few sizes more good good yes um anyway so what was your what's your number jay um the the fun number and it's probably a six for me okay trevor does um, this get the devil's own rating, or are you higher or lower? It's hard for me because there's certain scenes that I would rate fairly high, seven, eight sort of range, and then there's 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 some of the subjects that they tackle in it, like like the murder of Ajax. It just feels like they almost flippantly do it, and it, it sort of bothers me that it feels like Icarus doesn't have enough remorse. I just feel like he should have more remorse. I don't I don't know. Again, maybe the Cyclops factor is coming in here where he's he's his own his own ego is getting in the way of his remorse you know that's it dude yeah i I know it is but anyway and there's a bunch of it that i'm just that is not fun and um 
and almost yeah. not not almost addressed the way you would want it to be. So I I, I don't even know. Um, I'll go with a five for now. It feels okay. Uh, the two sides of it are very average, but the, the parts that are fun, I could w- rewatch those scenes ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, so overall, uh, honestly, for me, this and and this is higher than I expected it to be because I feel like I do feel like the blogosphere, the nerdiverse, the you know critics as a whole have were actually probably more unkind to this movie than they needed to be. Yeah. Um, so I, I, for me, it's a five. It's just a solid average, you know, movie. Yeah, and we've I've been we have been critical of this movie during this podcast, but the truth is, is the movie's not that bad. It's just right. I can see why the nerdverse hated it. Well, it's were, the world a, that it's in, right? It's not it's yeah. not in a vacuum, right? And so yeah, in a vacuum, I think a lot of those people are like, you should go see this film. And those same people who would have said that in the MCU with the MCU goggles on are like, what what just happened? I I can't believe I just watched that. Right. <laughs> so I guess maybe I'm the same. I I did enjoy it, but it's again, it's one of those movies that I would have enjoyed, but probably would have forgot I'd even watched until it showed up on Netflix five years from now. I'm like, oh yeah, we saw that. Yeah, um, I'll I'll probably go with the six. Sorry, I, what was your number, Trevor? I didn't give one. Oh okay. It's probably a five. It's for a big budget summer release sort of movie. Um, it just feels uh, it does not exceed expectations. Yeah, yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's a fair way to say it. Okay, yeah. so we are to our audience category. I'm I'm actually – I don't have a good answer to this. I'm curious what you guys say about who is the right audience for this. And it really feels like you need to be a fan of the MCU to watch this because why, why else would you be watching it? Mm, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I just don't know. I would have a hard time. And, and right now, because we have no context, if, if someone came to me and said, you know, give me the list of the MCU films I should watch and in what order I should watch them, I would probably list this film as optional. I'd probably just say, even even if you're enjoying it, you might want to skip this one. Well, it'll be interesting to see like what part it plays in. You know what I mean? Like, is the next end game going to be like a bunch of celestials come to snap half the universe, you know, or something? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what role it ends up playing in the next phase. But but I agree with you for like up to date. I mean, the truth is, is it took a long time to get to end game. Right. We, may never, yeah. we might not see these characters or for ages. In fact, they may decide to just not bring this plot thread into the greater thing. This might be the end of it. You never know. I mean, there's just so much that could happen between. Here. And I am, I am curious. So I will admit that um, by when Eternals came out, basically Phase Four at this point had Black Widow, Shang Chi, and Eternals. And I did enjoy Shang Chi quite a bit, probably more than. Uh, you guys did, but there was a part of me that was starting to feel a little bit concerned about Phase Four. <laughs> um, and and then Spider-Man but then you no watched Way. Hawkeye and oh no, no then then Spider-Man No Way Home came out and I was like oh they they can make amazing movies still so. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, did what did did you guys have any similar thoughts to that or or no? You know what's funny is talking about Phase Four, right? That is what we're talking about. Yeah. The the Disney Plus shows have engaged me in Phase Four more than the movies have. Yeah. You know, like I like Ching Chi Fine and and what was the other one? Oh, Black, Black Widow. Widow. I mean, Black Widow. Black Widow was okay, but it's like even it, even. Um, but you enjoyed Yelena more in Hawkeye yes, than exactly. In, <laughs> than even Yelena was better in the show than the movie, right? And like. Lo- you're more hyped for Loki, WandaVid, I mean, you know, all that. So that that's what's kind of been interesting to me. Like, yeah, I really feel like Disney Plus is laying a better foundation for Phase 4 than the movies have. I I guess maybe I enjoyed the Black Widow and Shang-Chi probably more than you guys did. Um, this was really the one that sort of tripped me up. Um, so I, I, I guess, I, you know, kind of looking back, I can see where you're coming from. Though. Yeah. But I think that... that, that Doctor Strange 2 is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was going to say, but I was I'm hoping that it will continue the trend, that it yeah. will, you know, it will keep the pace going because if we have a run of say 2 or 3 years of of Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternal style movies, um I think their numbers will die off to the point where the whole MCU will be done. Well, I mean so for currently the 2022 schedule 
um, you know, barring the theta, uh, you know, virus outbreak, um, we're slated to have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Thor, Love and Thunder, and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Uh, I'm a little concerned about Wakanda Forever, yeah. mostly because <laughs> I don't know I don't know what they're going to do with their leading man gone. What do you mean? Is, is it not just Shuri? I just assume it's Shuri. Maybe no, it, it is. is. I, it's I not? Know, but... Oh, forget it. I'm out, I'm out then. I mean... I am only here for a Shuri Yelena team up. Let me out of forever, or or I'm out. Let, let me, me break. Clear. Let me and break your your heart here, Josh. The only way but, you can do better is if it's Yuri and Yelena throwing Icarus into another sun. <laughs> I'm part of the part of the reason why it's not um, Shuri is that uh, in real life she's been anti-vax. She's been a, oh, jeez, yeah, really? Yeah, she's been a big problem for them on set. Brutal. They've had had to do reshoots and other things because of dealing with okay. her. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a struggle and so I don't even if she is the supposed to be the lead, I'm worried about its future even more so um because of of off camera issues. Drama. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Gotcha. So that yeah. that film has me heavily concerned because of the amount of reshoots they've had to do and the amount they've yeah. had and and other things they've had outside of of the film itself which can cause those things to start to leak into the film. Um, I'm not as concerned about the other two. I think Doctor Strange 2 is going to be amazing. And I think um, Love and Thunder is going to be probably the best MCU film that ever existed because Wait, Ta- really? Ta- wow. Takia Watiti is amazing. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I, 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 there's a reason why I have seen um, Thor Ragnarok more than any other right. movie. He just, yeah. He's my... He's your guy. He, he's my guy. So I, I am from... What I've seen him said on social media and other things, and, and just hints I've seen, I think Love and Thunder is going to be it's going to be the a massive hit, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh, interesting. All right, I'm going to put this little prediction in my pocket. I'm. That's I'm fine. Interested I, to see. I, I agree. Basically, everything Trevor said so far, I'm in agreement with. Okay. So supposedly, uh, well, I was, I was going to say, but uh, maybe people don't want to know that. So I'll, there there are rumors about who the next Black Panther is going to be. Okay. I actually don't know that either. I, I've been paying attention a little bit, but I sort of avoid those sorts of things, so I don't know anything sure. about it, other than, yeah. other than the things I've read about the off-screen drama. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I, it's, it, it feels awful to me that, that Black Panther could go down in the, not the character, but the, the franchise. The film, the yeah. The Black Panther franchise could go down in a, a ball of flames. Yeah. Don't worry. Without in in fifteen man. in fifteen or twenty years, Trevor, our kids will watch Black Panther No Black Panther No Way to Wakanda, and it will redeem <laughs> the first and second film. <laughs> well, maybe. All right. Well, let us know what you guys thought of the Eternals, and uh, we're excited to hear. <laughs>